Hi, in this video I'll show you how to make a 900 watts regulated switch mode power supply for an audio power amplifier with a dual rail output voltage of plus or minus 60 volts. The output voltage can be easily adjusted with slight modification in the circuit. The circuit offers input voltage protection, over current and short circuit protection and output voltage regulation. The complete circuit is as shown. It's built around the SD3525 PWM IC and the IR2110 half bridge driver IC. It's a half bridge topology switch mode pass a primary, it can handle 900 watt. At the input, you have your 220 volt mains. There's a 10 amperes fuse for short circuit protection. You also have an inrush current remitting thermistor. Capacitors C1 and C2 are class Y1 capacitors and they are connected to add a shown. Capacitors C3 and C4 are class X1 capacitors and this, together with the line filtering common mode inductor, will isolate the high frequency from the switch mode power supply from interfering with appliances connected on the raw frequency mains. The metoxide varistor protects the circuit from over voltage on the input mains. It's written for 275 volts and when this voltage is exceeded, the diodes conduct and basically short live and neutral and cause the fuse to improve and protect the rest of the circuit. The bridge rectifier should be written for at least 10 amperes and 400 volts. The bulk capacitors C7 through to C10 are 680 microfarads and at least 250 volts each. The thermistor protects the bridge rectifier during startup because it can blow as the bulk capacitors are changing. The resistors R3 and R4 act as discharge resistors for the bulk capacitors and also they equalize the voltage drops across the upper and lower capacitors because they act as a potential divider. With an input voltage of about 220 to 240 volts, the output should be enough from 310 to 325 volts as shown. Because here you have a mean point, the floating voltage here will be about half of that which is about 160 volts. To power the raw voltage circuit, you'll need a step-down circuit to provide about 12 to 15 volts DC and this is built around the RM7812 linear regulator and a small step-down transformer. This steps the mains voltage to about 15 volts which is rectified by this bridge rectifier and filtered by the capacitor C11, C12 and the 7812 IC to obtain a steady 12 volts DC. Also note the ground references. You have the ground reference reference to R and the circuit ground reference of 0 volts. The oscillator section of the circuit is made of the SD3525 IC and the current boosting IR2110 as shown. The SD3525 is a suitable IC for use in switch mode power supplies because it has good passive moderation control and offers a feedback to stabilize the output footage. It comes in 16 pins and all the pins are labeled as shown and everything is connected as shown. I designed the circuit to operate at 50 kHz meaning that you need to configure the oscillator at twice this which is about 100 kHz. And this is set by the timing resistor R5, the timing capacitor C16 and the downtime control resistor R6. The values are 15 kilo ohms, 1 on a farad and 33 ohms respectively. With these values, the oscillator will have an output frequency of 100 kHz and the outputs at the output pins 11 and 14 will be half of that which is about 50 kHz. Leave pin 3 and 4 unconnected because they are not needed in this case. Pin 12 is ground connected to 0 volts reference ground of the circuit. Pin 15 is VCC connected to 12 volts. Pin 13 is VC or the voltage supplied to the output drivers at pin 14 and 11. Pull it up to 12 volts as shown. The inputs of the amplifier are pin 1 and 2 as shown. Pin 16 generates 5 volts when the IC is spun. Connect the compensation pin 9 to ground through a small capacitor of 100 nanofarads. The shutdown pin 10 controls whether the outputs at pin 11 and 14 are on or off. You pull it down to ground to enable them and pull it up to a logic force of 3 to 5 volts to disable it. So we can use this also for feedback. Pin 8 is the soft start pin and across this and ground you need to connect a small capacitor of 33 microfarads. This ensures that during startup the output duty cycle will increase gradually from 0 up to the maximum value and this reduces the stress on the switching MOSFETs. Pull up the non-inverting input pin 2 to about 2.5 volts. 
generated by the resistor divider network made up of R7 and R8 connected across the reference P16 and ground as shown. Pull down the inverting input pin 1 to ground through a 1 kilo ohms resistor to ensure that the duty cycle is maximum as long as there is no feedback. So when the SD3525 is powered, you'll have two square wave output passes at pin 11 and 14 which are complements of each other. When 11 is high, 14 will be low and there is a small dead time in between. The SD3525 cannot give sufficient current to drive those power MOSFETs at such high frequencies and so you need a current boost section built around the half bridge driver I see the IR2110. This will boost the output current to a maximum of 2 amperes which is quite sufficient to properly drive the gates of the power MOSFETs at 50,000 Hz. It comes in 14 pins. It has two input and it has two outputs at pin 7 and pin 1 as shown. This will be used to drive the gates of the MOSFETs Q1 and Q2. You need to connect its pin 9 and pin 3 to VCC of 12V and connect the pin 11, pin 13 and the common pin 2 to 0V ground reference. The inputs are at pin 12 and pin 10 as shown with pin 12 being the raw input and pin 10 being the high input. Pin 12 controls the outputs at pin 1 or the raw output and pin 10 controls the high output signal at pin 7. Let's say on the first case you have a high output at pin 11 and the low output at pin 14. Pin 12 will be held high and 10 will be held low. Pin 7 will be pulled down to a row voltage which basically means it will be pulled down to the voltage at pin 5. This will ensure that the MOSFET Q2 remains off because its gate will be basically connected to its source. But because pin 12 is held high, the low output at pin 1 will be high and the gate of the MOSFET Q1 will be pulled up to 12 volts causing it to turn on quickly. When this happens, now you'll have a current path flow from the floating point of 160 volts, which is also this point, through the series capacitor C29, through the primary winding of the power transformer as shown, through the MOSFET Q1, through the current sense resistor 26 and to the circuit ground as shown. This is the first half cycle. On the next stage, now pin 11 goes low but pin 14 goes high. You'll have a high output at pin 7 and a low output at pin 1. This will cause the MOSFET Q1 to turn off. The MOSFET Q2 now will conduct because its gate will be pulled up to a voltage equal to that of the charged capacitor C21, which is about 12 volts. When Q2 conducts, it creates a current path flow from the plus 320 volts DC reference through Q2, through the primary winding of the power transformer as shown, through the series capacitor C29, through the floating point 160 volts and through the ROA bulk capacitors C8 and C10 are shown. This completes the second half cycle and the process repeats over and over again 50,000 times per second. The resistor 13 and the capacitor C23 act as a spike arrestor in case there is any voltage spikes generated across the primary winding. The current sense resistor 26 is written for 75 mA ohms and at least 5 watts. As more current flows through the MOSFET Q1 to ground, there will be a voltage drop at this point and this will be fed to the current sense circuit which I'll show you in a moment. When the set current of about 10 amperes flows through the resistor 26, the current circuit will trigger and find a logic voltage to the shutdown pin 10 of the IC and this will cause the outputs at pin 11 and 14 to go through causing the MOSFETs Q1 and Q2 to turn off. So this protects the circuit from overcurrent or accidental short circuits. I'll show you the current sense circuit in a moment. The power transformer is a ferrite current transformer. For 900 watts, I recommend you use the ETD49 or the ETD54. The primary turns are 30 turns and the secondary is made up of a total of 26 turns with a two center tap in between. The center tap is referenced to R, not the circuit ground. So the output is fed to a full bridge rectifier which is written for 320 amperes and 200 volts. This rectifies the AC into DC and this DC is filtered by the inductors L1 and L2 and the bulk capacitors C25, C26, C27 and C28. The inductors L1 and L2 protect the bridge rectifier from blowing up as those bulk capacitors start to change during startup. The resistors R15 and R16 are 10 kilo ohms each and at least watts. They equalize the voltage drops between the upper and lower capacitors. 
the main point is connected to the earth so this will be a zero volt reference for the amplifier for footage feedback it's made possible by the Xenodion D1 and the Optocopra the PCH17. As the circuit begins to work, the output footage will continue increasing and when it gets past 60 volts, the Xenodion D1 will begin conducting and create a current path through from the plus 60 volts in DC through the internal LED of the Optocopra, through the resistor R10 and to add a shown. This will cause the internal LED to turn on and so also will the internal transistor. When this happens, the internal transistor basically connects the reference P16 to pin 1 as shown and this causes the output duty cycle to start decreasing. This will also reduce the on time of the power MOSFETs and cause the final output voltage to stop increasing further. For the overcurrent circuit protection, this is the simple circuit. Basically the way this works is that when you have the voltage at this point which is from the current sensing resistor gets past 0.7 volts the transistor Q3 will conduct this is a NPN transistor and this will pull down the base of the transistor Q4 which is PNP and cause it to conduct the down D5 protect pin 10 from any voltage above 5.1 volts to protect the IC from damage that marks the end of my video and I hope you have enjoyed and learned something new. If so, make sure to give it a thumbs up, check out some of my other videos, subscribe to my channel, share with your friends, have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video.